Christmas scam saw Australians defrauded of more than $31 million and most who've fallen victim are in fact seniors. When it comes to scams, fake investment schemes now account for the highest losses while romance and dating scams dupe Aussies out of $25 million a year. And for more on this, we're joined by consumer affairs commentator Joe Uchukolo. Uh, good to have you with us again, Joe. Why are so many Australians falling victim to this when it's seemingly there's a lot of warnings out there? Yeah, absolutely. But what I want to say is people who scam people out of their hard-earned money are really manipulative, they have sophisticated schemes, and they're, they're really great at tricking people. So you think no one falls for these scams, but the t statistics say that people are. Who, mm. who is falling for them and are the fraudsters targeting certain people? So with scams in general, they'll target a lot of people and I'm sure you've received emails, messages, you know, even phone calls. And then certain people will respond to different types of scams. So say you are an investor, you're more likely to fall for an investment scam. Say you do a lot of online shopping, you might fall for a fake website that's selling items for purchase. So they target everyone and hope that you'll be responsive to the the type of scam mm. they're, they're pushing. There's probably nothing more divisive uh, in finance right now than Bitcoin. Um, the ACCC has reported a spike in Bitcoin scams. Uh, now before we uh, get into these scams, what exactly is Bitcoin for the people that maybe don't know too much about it? Yeah, great question, Ryan. So Bitcoin is one type of cryptocurrency. That's the more broad term. And now we've got 1,000 different types of cryptocurrency. And it is essentially digital money. So you know how we've got the Australian dollar, the US dollar? These are all currencies we're familiar with. Well, around 10 years ago, Bitcoin, the first type of this digital money, was created. And now we're seeing a lot of different types of currency. But essentially, you can't take it out but you can transact with it. You can buy things, buy and sell the, sell the currency. Right, so where are we seeing the scams associated with Bitcoin? Yes, yeah, so there's two types of scams with cryptocurrencies. One type is where they... Um, certain f fakers will take over a celebrity's persona and pretend to be a celebrity and then endorse a real type of cryptocurrency so that it boosts the price up and then the faker can sell their, their portion of cryptocurrency once the price is higher. The second type of cryptocurrency scam, and this is a really important one to take note of, is on social media people can promote uh, a certain type of cryptocurrency to, for people to buy. Mm. And now this type of currency doesn't exist, it's fake. And so they convince people to buy this fake currency and, and people just lose all their money. And there's some big news that's come out of Facebook. Facebook has essentially banned any advertising on even real cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, all of them, because we've had such a big problem with um, fake cryptocurrency yeah. being promoted on there. So if you see anything on Facebook around cryptocurrency, it is definitely a scam. There's no more well, um, advertising. What about text message scams? That's another really big area. And, and again, they'll, they'll try to approach you in all different ways, selling you all different things and see see if you respond but yeah absolutely yeah. Mm. text message for bitcoin what they'll say is um oh you've got some bitcoin in your in your wallet just log in to collect yeah. and if 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 you've got no reason to think you've got any of this cryptocurrency don't believe the text message. yeah well cryptocurrency is not regulated right so i mean i guess as consumers if we do get scammed what are our rights how do we get that money back so it's it's relatively new i mean it's been around for 10 years but like you say ryan there's no one really monitoring charge, this yeah. but but interestingly, in the US, the US government has taken action against some people defrauding um, people through fake cryptocurrency. So regulation is catching up, but the best thing is to exercise caution mm. and do your research if mm. you're going to buy anything, mm. particularly cryptocurrency. Okay, so that's cryptocurrency scams. Let's talk other investment scams. What else is happening? So there's all different types of scams we've been uh, familiar with. So we might see, you know, property or share investment scams. Another common one is superannuation schemes which will be hey you know you've got a superannuation fund switch it over to our scheme and we'll promise you lots of returns so some of the common things around investment schemes is generally they'll try to entice you with really great returns so they're higher than you'd normally expect but not unrealistic so you don't think it's possible and so also what scammers do is they really try to trigger an emotional response with you they might say oh Sally I've got an exclusive deal just 
for you, not Ryan. He's mm. not he's not special enough. Right. So they'll play on your ego. Yeah. So so they really try to manipulate the person, which is why they're so successful. Yeah. So how can we protect ourselves in, in that particular area? Okay. Um, so the best thing to do is if you get an unsolicited request for you to invest in anything, just ignore it. Yeah. So whether that's a text message, phone call, email, just ignore it. Don't even acknowledge it. Um, if you do uh, like to, if you would like to purchase what they're doing, research, research, research. Mm. So there's plenty of resources. There's scamwatch.gov.au. You can do a Google search on the type of investment to see if the other people have reported. So it's really a case of do your research before you part with any money because the chances of you getting anything back is really, really slim. Are there any cases where you can't get your money back if you've been duped? Most cases you can't get your money back. The only way that you might be able to get it back is, um, is if you can contact your financial institution, which is usually your bank, and it, again, it's very unlikely that they might be able to get some money back, or maybe in a few years, if the government manages to catch a few people, mm. you might get some, but Gee, don't rely on it. No wonder so many of us stay old-fashioned and keep that folding money <laughs> in our pockets, Under eh? the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Pleasure. Thanks, Joe. Now, soon for this afternoon.